everything's good man everything's so like my whole focus is now just you know making sure we're good you know what i mean up here and yeah keeping it together when you know what it takes yeah people don't realize that man it's a lot when you are uh the captain of the ship you right. know oh like i said You're earlier head, you know yeah. You got to do what's best for the kingdom, not what's best for the king, you know, and sometimes sacrificing some of your wants, like convention to make yeah, sure that everybody's good. A lot of people don't see that, especially in today's climate. I think they just become expecting of it. We got wings. We like to fly, too. But, you know, we sit here and we watch over everybody and watch over everything and make sure everybody good. And that's I think for people like us, that's how we show our love. You know, and that's where I think you and I relate a lot. We got that same stability and mindset as far as know how to, in essence, bro, keep it together, you know? Hell yeah. Through dealing with people, even far as convention, I realized I could do some things myself. And, and I'm saying all to say is like, when you say keeping it together, I underestimated how many people don't know how to do that. Yeah, it's a real thing, man. That's a real problem right now. Our first convention was like in 2014, bro. Yeah. You know? And it, it was, I think it was like, Minis we were tattooing in Minneapolis together. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's still the coldest place I've ever been. It was, that <laughs> shit was crazy. And, and you know, back to back, you'd go to Minnesota and to D.C. Remember, we were like following the conventions, like right back yeah. to back. And we just that stayed was in crazy, the man. That was a man. crazy time. Give everybody an intro, man. You're the first official video call that i'm gonna implement with this pod so like where are you from what do you do i'm dominic carter known as prezzo carter i'm the owner of rip canvas tattoo here in baltimore city we do a clothing brand called canvas cartel we do a bunch of social media hey, everything's good man everything's so like my whole focus is now just you know making sure we're good you know what i mean up here and yeah Keeping it together when you know what it takes. Yeah, people don't realize that, man. It's a lot when you are uh, the captain of the ship, right. you know? Oh, like I said you earlier, know head, you know, yeah. you got to do what's best for the kingdom, not what's best for the king, you know? And sometimes sacrificing some of your wants, like convention, to make yeah, sure that everybody's good. A lot of people don't see that, especially in today's climate. I think they just become expecting of it. We got wings. We like to fly, too. But, you know, we sit here and we watch over everybody and watch over everything and make sure everybody good. And that's, I think, for people like us, that's how we show our love, you know? And that's where I think you and I relate a lot. We got that same stability and mindset as far as know how to, in essence, bro, keep it together, you know? Hell yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't, man. I, I'm actually in shock because like, even like my buddy, Tony Scientific, he's been tattooing a long time and I really respect him. He's over in Germany now. I'm always shocked like he doesn't have his own studio or something like that. And I, I realized through dealing with people, even for his convention, I realized I could do some things myself. And, and I'm saying all to say is like, when you say keeping it together, I underestimated how many people don't know how to do that. Yeah, it's a real thing, man. That's a real problem right now. I'll talk to some of my buddies and I'm like, what? oh, how's the kids? He's like, well, I ain't seen them in months. I'm like, what? Wow. Like, that's, I'm okay. like, bro, that's crazy. You know, we're living, in, we're, we're living in this crazy world right now, bro, that it's not surprising, you know, especially after the way things have been going. It's scary. It's a grim, dark future for our kids, man. It is and it isn't because, again, that goes back to kind of the things we were talking about, adaptability from their fathers, how we adapted and yeah. how we were raised. I tell my kids, like, the way I was brought up, I don't wish that upon a lot of people. Same thing yeah. with you, I'm sure. Look what we made out of it. I didn't stick it to the plan like they wanted. Came out, it came out good, and it, and it came from work ethic. It came yeah. from work ethic, discipline. That's that literally next next in kin. That's that next to get crowned. You know, I get that heavy. Mm -hmm. I understand that heavy now, especially when you said like, you know, I got two daughters now, man. Being a, a girl dad is a whole different thing, my boy. I, yo, I'm sure, bro. I'm not gonna say I wouldn't mind having a little girl, but it's beautiful, bro. It's beautiful. It. I know you're gonna be. You probably fucking mush now, bro. You oh, probably man. mush. But that little girl just stares at you a certain way, or asks you this, asks you that, bro. I'm a sucker, bro. I'm a sucker. <laughs> uh, my boys were born, and I was like, let's go break some things, bro. Let's go break some bones. My daughters yeah. were born, were born, and I'm like, I want to put them in a bubble, you know. Yeah. I, don't wanna, I don't want them to get hurt. I'm, you know, trying to carry them. <laughs> Same thing. I want my, my ladies to be independent. I want them to be not. And this is in my own views on what I think 
obviously I, I want them to be them. Let's let's give them a little bit of that insight of what whatever we can kick down. Imagine yeah. that men, we're mentors too. Hell and that's yeah. something that it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because it's like we're learning. I love that you have your lady motivate her to do what she's gonna do, you know. That's yeah, awesome. she's out there. She's out there killing it. It's great to see you thrive and to continue to thrive, man. You gotta man, keep thank you, bro. You know? I mean, this meant a lot to me, man. I've been I've been looking forward to this all week, man. I swear. I'll tell you I, what, like I I've been anxious to do this and and believe me, like I there's a there's a lot of not there's a lot of doors I gotta go knock on right now. I'll tell you that much. Like I just have to do it one by one and I'll get overwhelmed because I need to go. I want to hit up all the homies, bro. You know, like, cause yeah, I, you know, and it, it's already it's doing pretty good, man. I'm getting a lot of good response and feedback on the yeah, stuff like uh, our our podcast called Stoop Life, where we hang out on the block and just kick it like the old days. And uh, yeah, that's what I do. That's who I am. You know, Fresno yeah, Carter. Man. Like I said, from Baltimore, I'm just a humble tattooer, man. I, I don't even know if I call myself as an artist or more of a technician. I would say. So, oh, man, uh, but you hit it. In the beginning, you say entrepreneurship. You yourself have a, your, you know, your hands in a lot of things. I had an episode where I'm talking to people about spinning the plates. You know, you know, I'm talking about those jugglers that have like the plates spinning. Oh my like, hell yeah, I know what Bro, you're talking about exactly. Like you when he's spinning them on the well, sticks and you got four of yes. them and you're trying to. We like to support each other in the community. When I wouldn't have met the broad spectrum of artists if it wasn't for traveling. When I met yeah. you. And I started linking up with everybody and started meeting everybody. We were our own generation, our own. Oh, for our sure. Own stage. It was, it's different, man. I mean, even when you do the shows now, we just did Baltimore just because it was like. Uh, it's the backyard, right? Yeah, it was the backyard. But it's 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 different, man. The way the way the energy is different. You know, I think when we came in in 2014, I know that was my first year doing convention. That was really my introduction to the industry. I never really had like apprenticeship enough and I kind of got like thrown to the wolves. I had people help me a lot, but I, I just kind of like had jumped in there. And Troy hasn't changed any of the shows at the conventions. He hasn't changed one a bit, but right. the audience, the artists have changed. I think we were on the tail end of a lot of the old school tattoos that were, you know, still in the game. It was more of like a traditional, not when I say traditional, I don't mean like uh, the actual traditional tattooing style. I mean, the traditional way the industry had been ran. It was still, we were still on the, I guess, the tail end of that before we got to now. And now you see a lot of like the different uh, anime artists and stuff like that. And I guess you might feel that, you know, they might feel the same way, I guess, when, uh, if you look back at like when the new school was getting big and you had people like Nick Baxter. Dave too. Remember Dave was killing it with all his new school, big traditional. Dave Tavano. Yeah, Dave Tavano. Dave, yeah. Dave, so Dave Tavano like, started introducing that traditional mm -hmm. neo uh, new school slash like, you know, it was pretty yeah. wild. His, his artistry is pretty insane too. Yeah. His stuff is great. I, Dave, Dave was one of my favorite artists for a long time. I got to meet him in DC one time and get to chop it up real, real heavy yeah. with him. Yeah. I think now it's, it's, I don't know. It's different. I can't really, I think the energy is different. It's still fun and it's still inspiring. It's a lot of artists I'm still inspired by, a lot of young artists. I mean, I guess I got turned out by y'all guys when I came in and get in and getting to see like the black and gray. I remember I wanted to be a traditional guy and then I got to hang around with y'all and seeing that smooth black and gray. And then I was like, no, nope, I think that's what I want to do. I got to get you, kinda bro, where I started. I gotta, you're black and gray. I was like, man, my, my boy's eating the sauce, man. He's he's over there getting some. All of a sudden, I look I look back, and I remember you went from the lettering. You were pushing that lettering really tough, right? Yeah, yeah. I still and love then, lettering, yeah. And then, but, like, when I knew you, bro, to you are, talk about, like, all of us, man. Like, when we self-reflect, and especially, like, the things we've been through or whatever with our, with our own, uh, like you said, learning our fundamentals and running with it, how our style gets developed, like, an identity within our style. Yeah. Talk about development and growth and expansion, man. Like, I, I just seen you from one. I blink. I turn around. I'm like, I had a double take. Like, my man, Dom, what? You know, what's I going appreciate on that, bro? bro. You got to give yourself man. that credit, too. When credit is, is, you know what I mean? Validation is we had our own little circle, if that makes sense. The way we. Yeah, yeah for sure. I would explain to my people out here, my clients, I would say, you know, the conventions are kind of like family reunions because I would see all my everybody. All the boys, 
I would yeah. make sure even no matter how busy I was before it ended, either you guys would visit the booth or I would go find you guys, right? I miss seeing you out on the road, man. Bro, like, it's tough, I, man. I you don't really think you don't think I don't miss it, bro? I do. It's just like it's, like, it's hard to do them yeah. now. I mean, it's hard to Crazy, do them now. Right? I mean, I get I still get to see some guys like when I did Baltimore, I seen a couple people. It's hard now because I think it, it takes a lot. You know, you're a family man. Uh, you got your shop. I think it takes a lot more men, meticulous planning. When you were younger, you would just go, you know, and you would yeah. figure it out when you get there. That was part of the adventure. But now, right. you know, with the responsibilities, I think it's got to take a lot more meticulous. At least from my end, that's how I feel. Same, um, yeah. Yep. And I miss seeing a bunch of the, you know, when I get to see a lot of the people, like, especially from out West, uh, you and uh, Tommy Kirschbaum, that's my man. I love seeing Tommy. Yeah, Tommy's going to um, be on here too, man. I, I oh, he is? Even wanna, like, yeah, I actually want to get all of us together on a call and just talk. Remember Matt Stolzenberg, bro? We, we Yeah. <laughs> all four of us, man. Like, you know, uh, so many of us, man. All the guys, Mario. How's Mario yeah, doing, Mar bro? Yo, Mario. Mario was just down here with me, man. He stopped in on me for, for a few days. And uh, actually, he, he I'm was, lying. It was one day. He yeah. came here. He he jammed out on his clients, and he had to get back out for the same reason. He had to go do some clients back in New York, and he had to go get his son. So, I mean, that's the that's life that's now, man. That's just how it is, huh? Yeah. That's just how it is, bro. A lot of us relate to that. I get, I'll tell you that much. A lot of the artists that I've been talking to, when I just check in on them, that's just how it is. Back 2017, 2018, even 2016, I think that's when we were hitting it hard, dude. And yeah, when you think about it. It's not even that far out, but the world took a pause and it it like aged us so much faster. Oh, for sure, man. You know Listen, what I mean? I'm not even gonna lie, man. When I get to talking to some of the younger guys, I feel. I mean, I was listen. I feel young at heart, but when I yeah. get to talking to people, I, I definitely You're still feel looking good, man. Look at you. I, I appreciate it, man. I feel aged though when when I get to talking to some of the younger guys. I remember like we were just talking about this with somebody else. Like I remember talking to you and talking to the guys and trying to figure stuff out. And y'all would give me jewels on tattooing. I mean, because yeah. that's that's really how I earn my stripes. Like I like I said, I never had a traditional like apprenticeship. So like when you all gave me like uh tips or lessons, man, I held on to that shit like fucking gold. And I don't see that as much in the new guys. You know, I think a lot of them think they got it figured out. And I and what I try to tell them is you haven't lived long enough to see your tattoos age. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That tried and so, true is kind of hard to match. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if you've been in the industry at a minimum, let's say, five years and you've seen a tattoo, and let's say you started to figure out tattooing to some degree within a year or two, and then you see another tattoo, your tattoo in three to four years, and then you can see it age, and you're like, oh, okay, damn, uh, those lines expanded a little. I should have maybe yeah. used a tighter needle, or maybe I should have used a little bolder needle here, or I should have put through more black in, you know? And that's what I, I don't see that them... And and I can't say everybody, but a lot of people I speak to, they don't want they they they're in a rush. Yeah. They're in a rush. And I and I do credit that to the internet that they're trying to, you know, and they have a lot more access to information than we did yeah. at the time. I remember trying to figure out stuff and and see stuff online. You had like uh Guy Etchison, you might have had like reinventing the tattoo, a couple people who was giving information, but not like, not that many. Even getting equipment was limited. You had companies like Unimax. You had, yeah. what was it, T-Tech out of New York on outside. And I think you had, uh, I, I think the first time me and my boy, like, early on, I think we had, like, a Huck and Spalding catalog oh, yeah. Spalding or some company, shit that yep. we had wound up ordering, like, a machine from. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was different. And no, our internet was books. Yeah. You yeah, know, that was, sure. that was, and flash racks. I mean, Instagram was coming up and especially when we we're in the starting in the circuit, but I would when I could really sit down and work on a style, I would get the book and doing seminars. Seminars was big, dude. Like doing, I took a lot of seminars coming up. I would, and it was hard for us to be like, I'm going to pause this much time, an hour or two to go join this guy's seminar 
but I know it's going to help me. It's like investing in my own self, my own business, my own tool, my, yeah. my trade. That was our YouTube per se. Like, you know, where I mean, they, shoot, that's still it. some of the best way we, I wound up uh, a few years ago. I flew out to I actually out LA and uh, took a sneaky G seminar. Oh yeah. And, um, yeah. 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 His portrait seminar. Yeah. Yeah. I took his portrait seminar and I learned some stuff, man. But I mean, this guys, I go like, I just went and uh, it's a guy out here named Sadiq Safari and he, I mean, he's a young guy. Has he been I mean, working on you? Is that who's working on you? Or? Yeah, yeah. He's been setting man up. I've been, I've been picking his head, picking his brain. Say, like bro, he's a, whatever you're doing, like, man. <laughs> pick it, I've been trying to pick his brain, you know, because he's a sad, he's a young guy, you know, yeah. but he, he's, he's figured some stuff out, you know, I think in this industry, the one thing I would tell a young guy is oh, be a student, man. Right. Be a student always. You know, I remember it's a guy named, um, I want to say his name was Wax. He, he he used to run with uh Rebel Colors and all of them years ago. Um, and I remember him telling me a story about how he had wound up meeting somebody and kind of like almost like reapprenticing and like just like elevating, you know, his game. I don't know if he was saying he re but he he like switched his game up after yeah. he had already had some years in tattooing, you know, and and that took him to another level. And he He's one, you know, one of my favorite people to see, you know, I mean, I love the game and I love seeing people kill it, man. I, I mean, I absolutely enjoy seeing well done tattoos, just not, not so much just even like the imagery, but the application. I I'm, I think because I started as a barber first, uh, like I said, that's why I call myself more of a, like a tattooer than an artist. Like I, I do think I'm an artist, but I, I'm more, I love the application and I want right. to see it done well. Yep. You know, when you see the skin is like not all crazy and it's just yeah. laid in and, you know, you see uh, people get crazy textures. I mean, you got a lot of people doing a cra lot of crazy stuff. But I remember thinking back, like when you would look at um, Paul Booth and oh, you yeah. would see him do all those crazy textures in, the, uh, you know, the black and gray for us, like the skin textures and the skin dips and the, the like it was it was insane. It, yeah. it for, for that time, I was like, right. damn, how do you do this? But I still enjoy seeing that, you know, smooth shade, like the the the, the basics, you know, solid pack. Like when it's done well, it's like almost unmatched. I mean, I, and, and that's the part that I still much I'm in love with seeing this well done tattoos. Yeah, the application and that turnout. I'm a big fan of, of just especially when these people come and tell you the story. It's hard to put a, the, the story of the tattoo in a post and, and tell people this tattoo represents a lot more than just what, even if it's like a very common thing, survivor or whatever the case, the more we've been doing this, the, the less I've been so, I don't want to say judgmental, but I, I let people have their moment with why they chose their tattoo because mm -hmm. that means something to them. When back in the day, we were like, damn, I don't really want to do this Infinity anymore. And I get it, yeah. but the other day I had to do one of those Infinity symbols because the sister of my client got it that passed away. She wanted to rock the same tattoo as her sister. You feel me? So I'm like, yeah. how do you knock on that? There's the whole stigma. There's a whole lot like, um, you know, we talk about it. We say, oh, how many Pinterest tattoos have you done? Or or what? what's, you know, I remember artists telling me, is that that's what's paying the bills, man. Until you're paying your dues, it's paying the bills. Get those. Oh, man, that's the money, though. Yeah. That's and why like, we'll always have a job. Somebody, yeah. Listen, somebody told me a long time ago, somebody will always have a position because somebody's always going to die and somebody's always going to be born. You know, uh, even through hard times, yeah. people going to want to get tattoos. So if we can adjust with the economy, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> he's live. <laughs> little little uh, special appearance. Cause I was trying to help you. Oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, yeah. That's cause daddy's getting old and he has to gather his thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he said, he said he thought I needed help cause I kept pausing. He's over there holding cue cards for you on. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. He's like, he's in the back. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the prompter right there. Teleprompt. <laughs> well, a lot of, a lot of clients will come in and they'll, they'll have an idea. They'll tell me the story. We execute it. The turnout is the most rewarding thing ever when they just sit back and say, man, you killed it. You know what I mean? Those are the most loyal clients. I mean, what, what we do is we, it's, you know, I, I know they always make jokes about therapy and this, that, and the third, but like, 
we really get to connect with people on a deeper level because we are putting a piece of art in their body that they can, they can look at. Tattooed a woman, her first tattoo, she's probably in her 60s. And uh, it was like two butterflies, something simple. I tried to do it as elegant as I could. And, you know, it was really dainty and small. And uh, she was just like overwhelmed. Her daughter just passed away. And here it is, this woman is at 60 years old getting her first tattoo, you know, and I'm honored to do it, you know, because it's like she could have chose anybody. A lot of people don't realize when you do those simple tattoos, those tattoos sometimes really are the harder tattoos to do. There's no way to hide anything. The lines have to be extremely clean. There's no, you're not going to shade off of it. You're not going to, you know, pack black up next to it. So you have to do it so well. Right. And uh, you'll see those people out. You'll run into them places. Those people will be overwhelmed with just joy, man. You can see it. They'll get to t telling other people and, oh, this is my tattoo artist and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And, you know, and you can wear that with a badge of honor, man. And right, people exactly. get to inquire and try to, they then they want to come and get something that represents them and, you know, their family, their loved ones, or, you know, whatever it is. I mean, that's, that's really what it is. We're putting pieces on people that have more meaning than we realize sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So your studio... When did you open it? What year was that? 2017. Okay. Uh, the second time. I, I mean, originally I, I tried say, to open it. Right, right. Because you had two, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Well, I tried to open up one years ago. I want to say maybe like 12. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, man. And we, yeah, got, man. The, we, we got that shit kicked in. We got the doors. We got raided. We were throwing parties. We were doing all type of stuff. So when I came back the second time and I did it more legit, it was in 2017. And from there, we've been just rolling. I think come June, we'll be open seven years. Well, that's dope. Congrats, man. Yeah. That's awesome. It's and, been and a you blessing. Have the, uh, you have the apparel thing running out of there still too? Or how do you... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we put it on pause just for two seconds, but we own the equipment. We wind up buying like a uh, DTG machine and a bunch of other equipment. We, I mean, It's fun, man. You, you, the one thing with the Pearl, I always realize like that's a whole nother game by itself oh, that yeah. I didn't realize. I didn't I didn't have a, a full, I guess, understanding about what went into it. Marketing is different for it. The customer base is different. For, you know, a lot of times I just like to just draw stuff and throw it on a shirt and see what happens. And that's the fun part for me. But the actual Pearl game is a whole nother, a whole nother monster by itself. What's up, Tattooing Out Loud listeners and viewers? A quick shout out to Helios Tattoo Supplies, one of the newest sponsors for the podcast. I'm proud to be a sponsored pro team member using their needles on the daily. Next time you're thinking about stocking up on supplies, head over to the website, heliostattoos.com. Thanks again to Helios for sponsoring myself as an artist and sponsoring the pod. Now back to the show. How did you, when you started to tattoo, because you said, okay, when I'm thinking about it now, man, that's pretty intense. You got thrown into the shark tank. If you're going to do the, your first convention in 2014, how long have you been tattooing already up to that moment? Man, I, how did shit, you start? I was I, so I was a scratcher kind of at that point. I was, uh, what happened was, so in, I want to say, I'm going to say two, three years at that point. I remember it was like 2000 and I want to say 10, 11, something like that. I, I can't, you know, super vague. And uh, I had a buddy named Dustin. He came back from Seattle and he had somehow talked his, his dad into getting uh some equipment from like like i said i don't know i can't remember it was american tattoo supply or sure, like sure. huck yeah. and spold and it was like one of them old school joints so he and he had been like fucking with this this tattoo machine i guess he was doing it when he was in seattle and then he knew i always drew i like literally all my life even in like middle school i was in a bunch of like art classes and shit but i was just a guy like you know working at home depot like Oh, we need a sign drawn. Ask Nick to 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 draw it. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna just I'll, you know I like doing shit like that." And I would just yeah. draw my free time. So finally, he wound up talking me into trying it. And from that moment, I was addicted, you know. And I was it. I mean, I was like a fiend. Like, and I, and that's not even a new joke. I was uh right. Yeah, I get it. I was um addicted to trying to get it right. I, I was like, every time I did a tattoo, I was like, I can do better. I know I can do better. I yeah. know I can do better. 
And I started going around the barbershop I was working at was right across the street from Little Vinny's West Side. At that time, um, uh, I think Dave Waugh was there. My man Chico was there. Um, this is before he started, uh, Dave started his shop. I would try to go ask them advice, which I wouldn't get much out of them. But I, my homie, Chris Pecker, who owns Concrete Jungle, and my man, Danny, Danny Bayron, who's now with uh, Black Lotus with Halo and them. Okay, yeah. They were down in my old hood, and I stopped at them, and, and they basically told me, like, look, you know, we won't... Uh, we won't uh, give you any um, uh, apprenticeship, but we'll like, you can come hang out and ask questions. And and I literally would go in there every day after the barbershop and sit there for hours. Right. And then I would just go home and like fuck my friends up. So I started going down to the tattoo conventions. And I think in uh, maybe like 2012, I met uh, my man, uh, Mickey. Uh, he's from Texas. My man Tino, they all from Texas, like a whole bunch of Texas homies. My man what's, Hayden what's Vargas. Shop you know, at, remember? He, yeah, huh? What shop were they out of? Do you remember? So they were rolling with Alex. They were oh, rolling. Yeah, yeah. I think they I know I don't even know if they were rolling with Alex at the time. Maybe, maybe not. They were with Alex or they were with um what's my other man out of Texas that was doing Ray. Ray was out of Texas. He was they were even one of them at the time. And uh, you know, you remember Hate him, right? You know, yeah, 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 Hate him, yeah. That's so it. I met yeah. Hate him. Uh, you know, do you know Tino? Yeah, I'm sure I do, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tino. I just uh, I'm bad with names, just as bad as anybody. My, my man <laughs> Mickey. I had met them. So then when they came back to Baltimore, the next year I wind up, you know, hanging out with them and showing them all around the city. So. Come 2014, I think it was the year after that, or, or it came up that next year. Uh, I got a, a a call from one of them, I hate them in them, and they said, "Yo, we down in." Uh, they were traveling with Alex Freestyle Mania, and he said, "Yo, we down in North Carolina. Somebody uh, dropped out. Do you want to come?" And uh, man, look. I went to my mom. I said, look, I got a hundred bucks to let me hold your car for a couple of days. Yeah. And I gassed that motherfucker up and I jumped on the joint and I, and I, and I went down to North Carolina and did my full show. And from there, it was almost like almost every weekend, you know, it was almost every weekend. And then um, I think that followed that next year. That's when we met. Right, coming yeah. up, right, like right that because it was like January of fifteen, I think, when yeah. we met in uh in um and yeah, in Minneapolis. Yeah. And I was just, you know, you remember I would be sitting up under you watching you do your thing because you were you were you were you were a bit of a letterhead too. I'm like watching you trying to soak up as much game. Um Yeah, I think a lot of that too was my uh influences around me. Everybody I was with, man, they were everybody was pushing letters. So, yeah. And then when I, when I was first apprenticing too, that was one thing that was told is like, Hey, learn to get good at lettering. Learn, yeah. Learn yeah. to do, you know, get the calligraphy, uh, calligraphy books, learn cursive, learn, and then implement yeah. that into a style and then start getting it. You know, the homie tattoo, Weddle, shout out Weddle, blocks and all that, man. Like, yeah. Uh, hey. Yes, sir. There it is. <laughs> all those guys, man. We always just same thing. We all just be talking yeah. watching. And to see how it's done and, and get, you know, just, and to be able to also to, to, to been able to have sit with them and, or sat with them and watch them work like they're next to you or whatever. That, that was a big help. That you fool know? flocks is crazy, bro. I watched him do a stomach rocker in like 40 minutes. Oh man. Yeah. The, I've seen, I've seen stuff like that, like with RIP Boog, man. Uh, oh, Boog. Yep. Yeah. And Dave, bro. Like I was over there at one of the rooms one time. He was working up in the room because you know, oh boy, I'd never want he he's like, nah, if I can't get to the convention, all good. I got yeah. a room. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So one of my buddies like, yeah, let's go to Boog's room. All right, let's go. And uh we went up there and like in no time he had a whole sleeve lined up. No, <laughs> like real talk. Good. yeah. He did that with Hayden one time. We were down in uh I think we were in I don't know, we were in Florida. I can't remember where the fuck we were. And we we went and dropped 
we went and took Hatem up there. We 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 dropped him off. I think the X Men movie was just starting, okay, and we yeah. was like, "Yo, we gonna come back through, bro." By the time he finished his full head, the credits was rolling. Yeah. Oh. I mean, he was he rolled through that motherfucker, bro. Damn. Yo, damn. Yeah, yo. it was actually All my right, buddy. Oh. It was my boy James, Art of Tattoos. Remember James? It was him and I. We were the ones that went up to the room at the Philly convention. I remember I have that picture of all of us that we took a picture and it was me, you, Tommy, James, and we're in the corner, like a corner booth or something. We all, we were all, dude, I got so many pictures of all of us. I remember we're like, you know, at Baltimore and, and after the show being, didn't you have the Suburban at the time? Yup. Yup. Damn, we're that's rolling funny in as Baltimore, hell. I did. I had, a, uh, <laughs> I had not as, I had a, a, a Tahoe, white the Tahoe. Tahoe. There yo, you go. Yup. I had a white Tahoe. Damn, the white yo, Tahoe. that's the, the, the beat and we was mobbing yes, in that sir. bitch. Windows yeah, that, yo. cold as hell. You're bumping Davies. <laughs> you had that, that music. That's funny as then. hell, bro. Oh my God. You were with the old boy. Uh, oh, Don. That's Dawn. my cousin. Yeah, Dawn. Yeah, cousin. yeah, Dawn. There you go. He's still with me. That fool's still with me all the time. Shout out to Dom, bro. I remember it was just us chilling. Those are the days, man, that... Yeah, I miss them days, man. You start, You just kind of... How bad do you want it kind of mentality, right? I think that's really what it came down to, man. I, I, I knew this was it. I remember one time I got into an argument with my wife. And, oh, uh, no. <laughs> at the time, because I was just like... She was like, I see you as a businessman. I'm like, I'm a fucking tattooer. You know what I mean? I was so <laughs> I was so locked in yeah. uh, on just one. And, and I'm still like that. You know, I'm right. still like that, man. I'm still like that. Right now, I think, you know, aside from just taking care of my family, I do this for the love of my peers. Yeah. You know, as a tattooer, I, I want the respect and the love of my peers, you know. Right. I mean, I love everybody. I love how you know lacing everybody with dope tattoos and them loving it but like when you like that when you like the post or you comment it that shit whole weight son you oh, know what man. i mean if i was able to to spend like i wish i could sit there one whole day and just show love to everybody bro it's just yeah. so hard anytime i get a chance to see your stuff especially you know when i started this i have my list of people that for sure are gonna be like i need to i need to have them on this this project of mine right and I'm like, I had you on there. I have all the boys you could think of within that that generational time that I was telling you about, that period where the conventions were at its, at its own time frame, right? Everybody you could think about in that circle is going to be on this at one point or another. All of us together, we'll nice. figure it out. Nice. But you see, because the same thing, I want to not, but also show love and talk about those times that have been lost, that, hey, let, let's think about it. How, you, if, how do you find time to, like, man, you do so much. How do you find time to edit, man? That's... It's That's hard. I'll tell you part. what, man, it's it like it's been a so I started this. I had the idea since last year. I waited. And then come this year, January, I told my lady, I was like, I need to be better at this. I didn't do the new year, new me thing. What I did is if we hit this reset button, quote unquote, of this new year, because, you know, damn well, you and I aren't really we don't think that way. This whole, but we can stop and self-reflect and say, what can we do better? What can we do different? Mm -hmm. Not so much as a goal or this new year resolution, but I said, this year is the year I'm going to kick off my project. If we're starting yes. from day one, you know, everything's going to yeah. stay the same. The hustle, the grind, nothing's going to change other than if I were to highlight something that I can do better or do different. So I said, you know what, if I can pull it off, I started this project like in February. Nice. So you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm recording ahead of time so yeah, I don't yeah. have to stress about the how do you find the time because, bro, you trust me. stockpiling it. Yeah, that's yeah, smart. Yeah. So I stockpile it. So if you ever wanted to do something like this, think of it that way. I'm. This is easy. This is the easy part. We're just chilling, bro. Like sometimes yeah. this could just be me and you on a FaceTime and we're just talking because there's times when you'd call me to check in and I'd be like, well, how's your end? How's the East Coast? How's the family? How's make sure our minds are right, where our state of mind is, where our current state of, of business, the shop, the studio, whatever, whatever's going on. Like, let's make sure we're, you know, we're, we're good. Yeah, and so this is the easy part, but yeah, you're right, man. I see why people do here. I'm going to pay somebody, but it's so tedious. It's so tedious. And that's yeah. why, like, even with the, the stoop, I mean, January went crazy for let's me. Let's talk about the stoop. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, the stoop is fun. I usually do it with my man Mike, my man Mike White. He's one of the artists at the shop. You know what I mean? That's like my main man. We 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 vibe real heavy because he's uh in a similar situation like us. Uh, he he's actually got like a master's in art. Really, I just you know showed him a few things, and man, he's off. He's killing shit. The only reason you know we haven't really done it is because shit kind of went crazy on my end a little bit in January. Man, one of the barbers got smoked in this motherfucker. You know oh. what I mean? Damn, yeah. yeah, straight gangster shit, you know, yeah, yeah, Baltimore. Yeah. Right. It was wild, bro, because he, I guess he had like a hit on him, bro. The, they came to me the day before and asked me if I like the police that came to them, do you need protection? I'm like, protection from from what? <laughs> you know, oh, they had us mixed up and shit. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I go to the shop working home, fool. Like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. And then the next day, all hell broke loose. Dang. And, uh, I shut down the shop and then uh, I think it was such a shock to me the way it went down. I kind of just like paused everything. But mm -hmm. now that the web is breaking, I got, man, I got a hundred people hitting me like, yo, what's up with this stoop? Uh, I'm like, let's, let's get it cracking, man. I, I like, listen, man, that's home for me. You know, I come from, you know, Baltimore city, bro. And yeah, that's hanging out on the block all night, running our mouth, talking shit, having fun, sitting on the steps. That's what we do. And what uh, I like about the stoop, what, what I what I like about your the project, the stoop, is that in the West Coast we did similar, but it was just the block, which yeah. is a similar thing. But we would be hit up the block, like they say. And a lot of people say, "You want to know anything? You want to find out." Whatever you yeah. want, you hit up the stoop, you hit up the block, whatever. Like those of you that don't know, explain to people what what is a stoop. We got row houses, you know, similar to Philly uh, and a lot of East Coast houses. So in the stoop, generally they made like a marble steps, and, you know, sometimes they brick. And uh, it's not really like a porch. It's just right. steps straight out the house. And because we live so close together, like it's, the stoop is like, you sitting on your steps, your neighbor sitting on their steps, y'all kicking a really, you know, y'all talking shit, y'all having fun, generally somebody playing some music. And that's what it is, you know, it's it's this front steps of your house. Cause right. we really didn't have like a porch, you know, some neighborhoods do, you know, I grew up in some houses that definitely had porches, but then some of them didn't have porches at all. They just had steps. So, and you would just hang out on the steps, man. And uh, that's how you get to know your, you know, your neighbor and the neighborhood. And uh, I really, you know, I love those days, man. Like the stoop was really a testament to the neighborhood because, you know, nowadays a lot of people, they don't get to know their neighbor. They're not hanging outside, you know? Right. So that's our way of saying, look, this is what we do. And uh, really it's just having fun. You know, I, some people want us to talk more about, you know, tattooing when we're on there. I think sometimes it's hard for me because it's like, I don't know what people want to know. Right, right. Uh Far as just general information about tattooing, you get what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. we got some funny ass stories, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell those, you know. Yeah. But it's it's really just about having fun, letting back, and talking shit, and uh, just enjoying yourself, man. It's about the camaraderie. It's about the the real human to human connection. Just like even now, like even though we're over the airwaves, you know, we we're rapping and it's we're you know it's us. We we right. talking. We have to you know. That's real human connection. I think that's a lot of the that's things been that's lost, getting man. lost. It's been yeah, lost. It's getting yeah, lost. you just said it. Yep. I, that's been lost, and I've been I've been telling people that, especially ever since we did. I've been doing this with a lot of these people. I come to learn a lot from people that I didn't even know. I knew you, but I didn't know you. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't know your yeah. your start. I didn't know. I didn't even ask you who your apprentice under. Why? I I never asked you that. I didn't care. I saw you as the person you were there. Like yeah. I could ask you who'd you apprentice under to hear like name drop. It's like when people compare who'd you apprentice under like validation again, right? Yeah, and yeah. When I first started conventions with like the LA crews or whatever, all the groups out here, we never asked each other who'd you apprentice under. We just knew what shop you were at. We yeah. just see you as what you're doing then and there, and we move forward. Same how we see each other evolve, our styles, our skills, everything gets sharpened, everything gets, you know. Uh, reach out to each other for like that advice, any kind of advice, whatever. Yeah, I never asked because it really don't matter. Yeah, none of that shit really matters, no, man. Matter. I mean, nowadays, if you a dope person, man, listen, I you hold a special place in my heart. You know, you you gave bro, me my CS. Give everybody shit, look you know at that. I mean? Look at that CS boy. You're the only. Yeah. You're one of the only homies I've ever like has handed that down to them. 
Uh, because... Man, listen, you don't even know how... Bro, when I came in the joint that day, because I wasn't even working that show, and I seen you, and you was like, you trying to get tattooed? I'm like, yeah, whatever. What's up? What are you trying to do? He's like, I'm going to like, give you a sick ass. The other... Nigga, yeah. I damn near cried. Nigga, I yeah, ain't going to hold you. And, because and you I know, knew I what that meant, that, man. Right. Something we never even said, asked or talked about was like, why? I just, I had so much mad love, respect from you. If I'm able to give that to this day, a lot of people don't know what that is. They'll look right past that that tattoo, right? Oh and no, so, this is one of my most meaningful tattoos, yeah. man. Yeah, I so, mean, Kansapos, man, it's with so, respect, you yeah, know. It's a, exactly with respect. And you told me that you was like, right. look, you was like, bro, you you've been you've been getting busy. You really stepped it up, yeah. and uh, that's really one of the most iconic moments in my tattoo career up until this point. Uh, and and that's the God's honest truth. That's like. Awesome. I I really uh it really means a lot to me. You know, outside of like shit for my wife and my son, this right, probably right. is top three meaningful tattoos. Is that CS an, is an extension of me, my family, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to give it away, if I do that on anybody, literally, I can count them on one hand how many I've I've done. Maybe like four. I know the that that value, the meaning, the weight, where a lot of people at some time frame and they were they were just getting him just to get it in a sense. And I was like, man, is that even earned? You know what I mean? And with yeah. you, like since day one that I seen you again, like I saw you just push and grind, push and grind, whatever, expand. When when I tattooed that on you, and yeah, you didn't work it, but I was like, I didn't know when was the next time I were to see you, right? Yeah. Because we're back and forth. Who else would have mm -hmm. done that on you? I don't know. I don't know who else around you would have been was was badged in like that. If I'm able to hand that down, I'm going to do it with someone that, you know, I have that special bond with where, again, it's almost like it's like it's a brother, man. It's a brotherhood, you know? No, I, I truly appreciate that. I mean, like I said, and I say that with the, the utmost love and, and respect and authenticity, bro. Like, I literally, uh, I think my wife might have fucked around and cried when I got it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. she knew how much it meant to me, you know? Um, cause like you said, a lot of people especially the newer tattooers, they don't even know what it means. Right. You know? And uh, I've had to explain to people, like, you know, you can't ask for it. It's offered, you know? Exactly. Uh, it's, it's some rules to this this thing that I've been uh, blessed to be a part of, man. And um, I respect that. I mean, each person, you you get a chance to lay needle to skin. That's permanent, you know? Yeah. Um, of course, yeah, we got lasers and shit like that, but that's like a, that's a permanent thing. You have to be meticulous and, uh, almost perfect in every way, at least strive to be that way in every tattoo, Absolutely. you know, it, you have to strive to be perfect, you know, because this person's outward flesh, they're giving it to you, you know, they're, they're giving it to you and they're trusting you to, put a piece on them that means a lot to them. And I don't know if a lot of tattooers truly understand it. I mean, I've cried over tattoos I've done that I wasn't happy with. That's, that's the God's honest yeah. truth. Like, I mean, real, real life tears, like feeling like I wasn't worthy to be in this industry, you know, at, at one point. And uh, I still, to this day, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, 13 years in 10 years professional, I would say, since I started the shows, I still get like that, bro. If I, if I, if I'm doing the tattoo and it's not exactly the way I'm thinking it, I'm, I'm still in my feelings a little bit sometimes, you know, and yeah. everybody around you can be like, man, that shit looks amazing. You great. You like, nah, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm striving for here, you right. know? Right. And then you're watching a lot of these, you, you know, not in the comparison thing, I think the great thing about the internet and let you know what's possible now, you know, you can see artists that's, uh, you're only competing against yourself, but you get to see people's work and know what's possible, yeah. you know, and know what levels you can, you know, you can take it to. I remember like, uh, it's funny. I shit. You were, I remember years ago looking at, like I was saying, Paul Booth, and you would look like, like Ben Grillo was the first dude doing like this mini portraits and shit like that. Oh, and yeah. uh, and then uh, you had uh, 
um, like even like uh, Nico, you know, when you were seeing his color pe realism pieces, but now you're seeing dudes kind of like out of nowhere just going crazy, and yeah. it's been pushed to such a high level, man. Raising the I bar love consistency. seeing that, yeah. man, and seeing it in person is is. It's it's one thing to see it online. That's the one thing I do love about the shows. When you take away all the noise, when you take away all the gimmicks, and you take away, and 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 you see like an artist like yourself, you know, and I'm like yo, oh, and I come and I get to sit in your booth. It's that's almost like a small seminar to some degree, and I'm yeah. sitting there, <laughs> and you're right there, like a foot away from the tattoo, you know. And uh, to the point where, you know, you might have to tell me like, yo, you're in my light, you know, because I'm staring like, damn, yeah, this no, is it's, fire. This is crazy. Yeah, anytime, I, I, like anytime you you ask something, I'd be like, make sure I can. It's hard if I have you had you've had an apprentices, right? Yeah, yeah. A few How many now. apprentices have you had? A two, three? No, shit. I've had a few, man. I've uh, I, I'm proud to say that every person I've apprenticed have be basically become a, a monster, really better than me, quicker than me. That's um awesome. Uh, the first kid I apprenticed was, uh, his name's Frankie uh, O'Connell, uh, Baby Blue TTT. He, okay. he specializes in anime now. He's a, he's a savage. He went to the art school. My man, Chris, uh, he's out there in Cali with you now. He's actually across, the, his shop is across the street from uh, Tim Hendrick's shop. He's all, he's out there. He went back to Cali after working with me for a few years, and he really wanted it. I mean, he, I remember him driving an hour of, um, a day from DC um, after a teaching job, literally mm -hmm. every day. And he would come straight in, jump on the floors, clean up, do his thing. And um, he's really went crazy with the traditional. And now that he's home in California, uh, you know, he's been working on his fine line. And then I can see that this really, really stepped up. Um, I apprenticed, um, uh, my man Jose Vigo, he's a kid from Venezuela. He's he's crazy with the traditional. I mean, he can do other things, but that's what he loves to do. He got his own like spin on it. You know, I, I've apprenticed a few people. My man Mike, like I said, my man Mike. I I don't call it apprenticeship with Mike. He he says it's an apprenticeship, but uh, his black and gray is really stepped up and went real crazy. I mean, I let him do a stomach piece on me not too long ago, you know? Nice. And, I, and I think because I never had an apprenticeship and because I had people like you who showed me a lot of love and respect and anytime I asked questions or you weren't, you weren't like ill wills or nothing or being like, you was like, nah, the boom, boom, boom. That's, if I see it's a person who really want it, I don't have no problem showing you, you know? Yeah. I don't have no problem showing, but you got to know you want it. You know, that's the thing that you say you saw in me, that's what I got to see in them. You know, you got to want it. Yeah. Uh, and long as they want it and show that, I have no problem, you know, helping them out because uh, a lot of these, the, fortunately, the people that I did help, a lot of them were already like art school graduates and shit. You know, I didn't have to teach them art and shit. I just had to teach them uh technical ability yeah uh so once they learned that right. yeah they were like off off to the wind you know nice. and now some of them are teaching me shit you know Crazy. uh as far as design wise and stuff like that because they do have that that um, knowledge of it right that composition yeah. knowledge mm -hmm. yeah that's something yeah. that's something you don't learn this in school man you, have, mm -hmm. you learn this in the shops and like i didn't get that until I started getting my 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 own mentoring in the business side of it also and starting to take and all the different shops that I worked at take the good take the bad the the what to do's what not to do's you know and that's that's literally how I built up my own business plan mm -hmm. and when I when I opened the shop my the first shop because again like you I had one other studio that's where I mean I had every everyone that I can gather around me come to help me work that day and I didn't want to tattoo. I wanted all my boys to eat. I wanted everybody else to tattoo. Yeah. I had Hus Hus Baby was there at the time. My boy R. Oh R. shit, Hus Baby. Yeah, Jesse Rochin was there. R.I.P. was there. Uh, Scan Artist. I don't know if you remember Scan. If you've met Scan Artist, he's from San Jose. A lot of Bay Area artists. Okay. Had uh just a lot of people that were that just came in to basically fill in the spot that I was like, hey, come and come and work. 
uh, the homie James was there too. Art of Tattoos. Mm. Yeah. Booked book to come hang out. Because that was just, I wanted to share that moment with whoever I could, whoever could make it. And, and same thing with this project. Industry inks have been around for a while and recently they expanded their pigment range. Everything from your primary colors, opaque grays, brand new anime skin tone, bright neon fluorescent tones, gray wash set, and black lining ink. If you haven't yet tried out this high quality pigment, head on over to industryinks.com and with your order you can take advantage of a special promo code using OUTLOUD for an exclusive discount. Try out their new range for yourself and thanks again for the partnered sponsorship. The first time I opened it, it's like you, man. It's those challenges that we have to trial and error, you know, figure all that out. And, and you know, the second time, well, this studio now has gone through its own changes. Just like it becomes you. Like you're, you, you have a private studio now, right? How, how do you do, how do you work it? So now, I mean, I'm just up here because I used it when the, I closed the barbershop space down. I was like, all right, let me kind of. I, I, you know, I threw some paint, cleaned it, did some things, and I started using it as, like, my private office just to get grab some space between me and the shop. Because, like you said, the shop itself, um, it really took on a life of its own from what yeah. you birthed. And I think uh, a lot of the guys that are there are a lot younger than me, you know, um, at least by almost a decade or more, you know. And uh, some of them in their, like, mid-30s. And... Um, I think I just, I needed a break. So they kind of like, you know, they self-manage. So how I run my shop, I, I generally do. And uh, my man, Danny Bayron, actually, he gave me this tip when I opened up this, this second time. He was like, I, I do set, I do 60, 40 Monday through Friday. And I do 70, 30 on the weekends. Uh, one lesson I had to learn, I had a, a artist here, Gina Takio, who's an absolute fucking savage. She's actually from Cali too. And, um, we are still really good friends when she decided to open up her studio. One lesson I learned, like she was a heavy hitter and she only wanted to come in a couple of days a week. And, uh, I wind up changing one of the rules. Like once you hit a thousand dollars, you, you know, you automatically drop to 30%, you know, um, because it's ethically, ethically with business. I just, I didn't feel comfortably taken. Yeah. 40 from somebody who worked hard to make a thousand dollars that day. I'm good right. with 300 as a shop owner. You know what I mean? I'm not right. really trying to, um, I want to be smart with my money and build my wealth, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to take more than my just fair share. Right, you know, right. I, I'm not in it to be kick in. Don't let, don't let, yeah, I'm not in it to be, I'm not in it to be greedy. I try to provide everything outside of like, you know, ink and needles and shit like that. But like right. everything else you need, I provide and, uh, I just try to keep, you know, keep a good atmosphere. I do see now that, like, come, uh, I think, maybe the end of May, I am going to go back down into the shop with the kiddos. I'm going to do some, some like, slight renovations, some paint, some mix, move some shit around. And I think I am going to try to install a little bit more structure in some ways. The biggest issue I think I have is that, and I didn't understand this now until I was older. I remember when I was a barber, I used to get into an argument with this guy named Mr. Webb who brought me into the barber game. Uh, and he always wanted me there on time. And I didn't get it. I'm like, well, I'm paying you your booth rent. But now that I own a shop, I understand what he means because me as a person, even though, yes, I am a contractor, I represent the business, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to get them to understand that what they put into it is what they're going to get out of it, you know, far as not just the tattooing itself, but how you structure conducting business, not just personable to your clients, but showing up on time, being overly prepared. All those things will reflect, you know, saving your money, saving your money, learning how to invest your money, learning how to do your taxes. Right. That's one thing I'm trying to get them to understand that that'll take you further unless you want to go get a job when you're 60 you know, start, you know, talking to your accountant or financial planner. That's what I want to try to, when I go back in there, I really want to try to instill that to them because I think if you don't set yourself up as you mature in age and mentality, I think some people become disgruntled with it because yeah. they might not feel like they, they've they gotten everything, you know, that they wanted, but the these those things take time, if it makes sense. You know, tattooing is fun. I love it. 
you know, but the business side is a whole nother monster. And the better you learn that, the better you'll be. I think a lot of people should learn and understand that part just as much as the tattooing. And I think you'll have a lot more healthy mindset tattooers. Right. And not only that, I think you hit it on the head with the the mindset that you have with treating not only the people that you work with or the the people that work for you, but mm -hmm. your clients, the flow of your traffic, your mm -hmm. income. We are built different to compare with that flow of convention traffic. So imagine conventions. I know some guys that just ride the convention circuit, bro. They don't have a home shop. And yeah, think, yeah. No, I think that you was know who I'm talking while. about too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no, like, hell yeah, I know them. And I was which is, one of hey, those guys it's that cool. are yeah. it's all good. But guess what? Yeah. During COVID, I know a whole boys. Man, were that's like, heavy on your body though, man. Oh man. Bless your heart if you can keep that up, bro. <laughs> I ain't I'm trying to have a home base and chill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. To be yeah. able to do this though, to be able to do this, to be able to sit down, take a breather. I get yelled at by my lady telling me you need to take more days off. And I'm like, it's hard. I can't, if I take a day off, I'm still doing so. I still have something yeah. to do. You know? I, tell, I used to tell my wife that all the time when she was still working corporate, I'd be like, look, I don't get no vacation time. I don't get yeah. sick leave. You know, uh, it's always something to do when you yeah. are entrepreneur, you know, right. it's always something to do. And when you do get them breather, a lot of times you got to make yourself, but being a better businessman and structuring your business will help you with that. You know, Absolutely. being able to take that time and especially once you get to having kids, man. Yeah. You know, my son now, he just he's about to be nine. One and done. We started a little late. So yeah. we were in our thirties when we had him. So like I think um, but now he's at an age where he's like asking for me. You know, he's like, yo, you come into this game, you know. You coming to karate that. with me today? I know, you know? That 100 <laughs> percent And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll be yeah. there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like looking at my schedule and I'm like, I'm calling clients and I'm like, hey man, do you mind if we, you know, do right. this, that, you know, I'll look man, out for you. I just, and most, this is well, you and I are doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing most, it in the East Coast. I'm doing it. We're probably doing it the same day, same time. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. You're never gonna get none of that time back with him, man. Like one day, no. I, it's hard for me to even look at his baby pictures, man. And your boys are big now. So I know yeah, and, 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 and you know, it's hard for me to look back because you're like, damn, I'm never gonna get this back anymore. No, I've been going through the, the ringer back and forth. My struggle behind the curtains, the stuff that people don't see as as like what we do. It could be a mix between the tattooer, the father, the trying to keep it together for the colony kind of thing. You know what I mean? For your tribe, like you said. Yeah, you're, you're a king, bro. You're a king with a kingdom. And it's you got to do man. what's best for the kingdom and not what's best for the king. Think back nine years ago, 10, 11 for my, my oldest is 11. When he was three, when they were three and four, they missed out on a lot of that dad that was on mm -hmm. the road grinding where you saw what they did. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? And that, that's the things that also I'm like, man, I go back back and forth through that in my head. And I'm like, and now I got the two girls. We got those two girls. And I'm like trying to, like you said, man, being that my present. That's probably why, too. Part of a big part of why I haven't really got on the road, man. There's a lot, there's a lot to attend to with the family. Um Yeah. And you kind of feel can, guilty. No, no, <laughs> it's, yeah, I know. It's not guilt, but it's it's a it's the balance. No, struggle. yeah, the balance. You struggle. feel like it's a. Uh, I know for me, it's weird. I it's like a like it's not guilt. You not, know what I mean? I, yeah, I don't want to say it's fear. It's fear. There it's like go. I want to. I, I feel like I just need to be there at all right. costs. Right. You know. Uh, yeah. But far as your sons, man, like they were young, man, and now. Like now counts, you know, all that's yeah. gone. Like that now is what really counts. Cause, uh, so I'll give you an example. A, I'll give you an a example. better memory of it now. Exactly. Cause I'm curious if you do the same, my boys, they come and hang out with me at the shop and they see what I do whenever they're with me kind of thing. Cause uh -huh. I mean, you know, and I do make, obviously I, I make the time to, I'm not, I don't just keep them in here. Like, and you know, no, you guys are going to be with me cause I'm grinding. No, I just, the times that I do have to work or whatever, they come with me so they can see and they understand so they can also embed that in their head to be like i get it i see what my dad does they, they oh see no what that's I, important you know? yeah that's important man listen i don't know if you're you know i never my both of 
my stepmom and my dad are entrepreneurs. Right. Like I grew up in an entrepreneur household. So I got to see it in that. I didn't, I didn't realize it when I was younger, but as I got older and I reflect, like I was being groomed for this. Yeah. So the same with your sons, the same with my son, he's here. He sees what I'm doing. He's, you know, he's going to have a different appreciation because it's not like you're going to an office and he doesn't really know what you do or come to work with that. He's right. seeing you in the mix. Yeah. Like if you want something out of this life, you have to do it. You know, uh, now when the shop was open, I had my son sweeping up. That was one of his little jobs. And, right. you know, that's going to carry on till they get older. You know, your son say like, yo, I watched my dad get to it. I watched right. my dad work. I watched my dad build the shop. I watched my dad manage the, the guys that work at the shop. You know what I mean? Like he, they get to see it from a firsthand perspective. So when they go in their journey as men, those are the things they're going to reflect on and be able to pull from. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize, especially with, I mean, kids in general, but I'm going to say boys to men, because that, you know, we have young, uh, you're raising them to be young men yeah. and understand the world from a mature perspective. And the, un the earlier that they understand that, the better that off they'll be, you know, right. and I, I was fortunate thing, I to see that with my dad. How that's going to help them for their future. Like you said, that's a, such a great privilege for us to be able to do that. Father working a nine to five or a job where kids aren't really, it's not safe for them or you can't, you don't have that kind of, capability to bring your your son to see firsthand like that experience mm -hmm. and imagine what's what, what so what does your son want to do does he have any kind of like aspirations of does Man, he I, don't know what with the, I want a tattoo dad not really he'll draw and trace yeah he hasn't said he wanted the tattoo he's he told me what type of tattoo he's wanted already it was okay. crazy yeah he yeah. told what me is it? he said his one he said his first tattoo, he wants a back piece with jesus with a lion on the leash Whoa, whoa, got to dissect that, my boy. <laughs> I said, damn, that's crazy, son. That's a crazy idea for an eight-year-old, homie. Imagine that's you like his pit, that's his pit bull. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, uh, but no, he, he really, um, he, he'll come in and uh, he'll take all the, the stencils. Yeah. Uh, and he'll trace them up and color them. That's his thing when he comes here. If he's not playing a video game, he'll bust out. He'll go grab the light pad and he'll go into the stencil, the, you know, the the, the um, print room and he'll grab a handful of like the stencils and he'll just. So I don't know what he wants to do, honestly. He, I don't, yeah. you know, it always changes. No, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm know, just curious. But, My boys, once in a while, they'll say, I want a tattoo when I get older. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't say no to that, but I know that I just want it. Whatever your calling is, I'll be there to support it. Um, do I want them to do this? I honestly, I can't even be sure. A lot of us, like you, like you mentioned, a lot of us fell into this where we created out of nothing, out of that, take that jump, take the leap of getting my mom's mm -hmm. car, taking that drive. You know, that's, that's a lot of people that we had that sense of belonging the way we're trying to find our identity. Let's say like in a street persona or like this street, you know, I was attracted to the urban arts, man. So that to me is what I, you know, oh, I see these big walls as canvases or, you know, to, to find all that, the cut, the vibrant colors, transposing that on the skin and, and mm -hmm. getting those, how to draw Spider-Man books. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know what I mean? <laughs> From as a child. Yeah. When I was a kid, I wanted to do comic books and shit like that. And it was like, yeah, see, so you have a big influence in comic books too, right? I was, yeah, yeah, I wasn't, uh, but I wasn't really, you know, I used to draw them a lot as a kid, but like, I don't know if I was disciplined enough in that way. And that kind of got lost on along the way. And like you said, I kind of just fell into it, but that satisfied that craving to create in a I guess a visual arts yeah. way uh, that I enjoy way more than it's more satisfying than the clothes or any of that type of shit. Like I, I like doing those things and those are fun. You know, those are more like hobbies for me. Tattooing is a like, an actual like life path for like even if I even if let's say today I hit it for a million dollars, two million or whatever, I'm still gonna tattoo. 
Right. Absolutely. You yeah. know, I'm still going to, because I just thoroughly enjoy it. You know, uh, I think that's one of the only times I get to like zone out and not think. And you get, like I said, we were talking about the, going back to the clients, connecting with them and getting to hear their story and really have that person to person. You know, you get it in barbering a little bit, you know, Um but not like tattooing, you know, with tattooing, especially if you're doing like a, a piece, you're mm -hmm. locked in with that person for hours and uh, sessions, hours. Yeah. You were like, you, you almost have to take everything else off the table in your mind because it's just you and uh, not messing up in right. a way. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. You know, when you run in that line and you like, you hold your fucking breath, you're like, <laughs> I don't want nothing else moving, and, yeah. and it's so intrinsic. I guess I, you know, I you don't I you don't ever see what's what's the plans for between you, maybe you, wifey, whatever the fact for retirement. Do you guys ever see that kind of futuristic? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, we bought our first four unit apartment building, probably just more real estate. You know, buy more yeah. real estate. I started getting into learning about the stock market last year. Okay. Um, a few years ago, I went and hired an accountant that, I, you know, we have him on retainer. So, you know, I communicate with him a lot. So yeah, retirement is definitely in the, I don't know if I'll ever retire in the way of like, I guess the way we think about retirement where I'm yeah. just off doing nothing. I, like I said, I think I, I'm a tattoo as long as I can, man. Even if it's like, not as often, probably just real estate to offset not having to work. I'm in the gym real heavy. You're always in the gym. I think keeping your body together is important. I'm hope you know, You're I want to be now that you mentioned the uh, gym. Are you doing jujitsu also? No, I was. I was, man. I tore my calf muscle and oh. the school we crazy 88. I wind up. Oh, okay. You uh, went to crazy 88. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. wind up. My son is still there though. So I wind up, he's already striped up, right? Yeah, he's striped up. He's um he's trying to get into the like from the children to like where they're really getting serious now. He yeah. has a big test coming up and he wants to get more into Muay Thai, which we're okay. going to do. I enjoy jujitsu. Man, jujitsu is a is crazy, yo. It's a like the boxing is endurance, but the jujitsu when you get the rolling Oh, yeah. That's a different type of endurance, bro. I mean, you're fucking sweaty, son. You're like yeah. that pushing, pulling. You're, you're fucking breathing. Ex you're exhausted. You got a gas tank. And uh, I took all my payments and, I, like, I guess, you know, whatever, because you got to sign a contract. I yeah, passed that yeah. over to my son. Okay. I was doing the, one of the kickboxing class. I oh, stepped okay. back to throw a kick. Ooh. And I threw, I thought a motherfucker kicked me. I looked back, wasn't nobody there. <laughs> Who just that kicked my calf? Was, that Who motherfucker was, right yo, now? you can see the, you can see the skin like wrapped around the muscle. So now I just go to the gun range. But now you're <laughs> just getting, you're getting that yoke, son. You're getting diesel. Yeah, huh? no, I'll be in the gym every, most days, yo, most days. It's more mental. It's a mental thing. I was going to say, me. is that, that's like your therapy, right? That's your, your yeah, therapy. that's my yeah. mental thing. I usually go early in the morning. I get up. Um, you know, take all my like pre-workout shit or whatever it is to get me, get me going. And then I go in there and uh, lately I've been, I'll hit like the sauna for 20 minutes, stretch out in there and then I'll go get busy. And that's just the way I really enjoy starting my day, man. Like, uh, right. if I can't go past two days, I want to get back into martial arts, man. I think I'm going to do it soon. We We got a big trip coming up to Greece in oh, um, nice. the end of July and the August. Are that's where my wife going? is from. Oh, she's out there. Right, right, right. You, that's where she's from. That's uh, her dad's still out there and her fan, you know, her, her, her mom passed, but like her aunts and uncles and we're going to go see her dad and hang out and her brothers, like all her brothers are going. So uh, this is going to be the first time she's been back uh, home to Greece in like a, a long time. So we're taking our son. So like right now, that's like, the big plan focus for this year is uh getting ready for that. And so which you, I'm mad nervous because it's funny. Yeah. I don't I being away from the shop that long is crazy. Yeah. Uh, man, we're that, going for like that, 16 days. Oh, I'm sure you probably already have, but 
Or unless you you have conditions where she probably told you you better not bring no tattoo machine, you better not. Oh no, tattoo? bro! I already told her I'm taking my equipment. Straight okay, I'm gonna say. I might. I'm. I, she's gonna get something while we there. Something. Yeah. It's gonna be something. I might try to mob around see if I can find like a, a, a studio shop. in Athens yeah. or something. Hit up a shop ahead of time, man. Be like, let me come guest for a day or something. Maybe a, a night. You know, yeah, that'd be, that'd be yeah, sick for sure. Have yeah. you ever have you ever done guest spots? I just had homies tell me come hang out. Like, it wound up me just like kind of hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, uh, my man Drew tattoos out in Jersey. Or he had told me, and I just came and I just wound up just like hanging out. You know, I didn't need right, to do no right, tattoos. Right. When I was in Germany, I was supposed to do a guest spot, but I wound up just fucking yatting out the telly because I had like mad military based kids that I like my uncle at the time he still lives out that way but he was he lives in uh Belgium now but at the time he was in Germany that I couldn't coordinate the time with the kids to link up so I wound up doing it so but I got to like hang out with them in the shop all day and to, you know and then later I wound up doing my thing but yeah now I want to like I said I want to come out and guess about you you might you know gutter banks I want to go out you know gutter yep yeah, yeah I want to yeah, go yeah. Check out Gutter. He's he opened up a shop out in um he's Oregon. Yeah, I'll say he's up north. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to go check him out. And I got like a I got like a in my notes in my phone, like you you're on there. I got a few people that I listed like in the probably next year or something. I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to set some time to try to like start doing some uh you know, some guest spots. Yeah. I don't absolutely. know. I mean, I want to do more conventions, but I don't know if I don't know. I don't know. It's it, it's a lot. That's a lot for me now. Yeah. It's 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 loud. It's mad yeah. loud. I was gonna ask you how was Baltimore. So you just did Baltimore. I knew a lot of people that were there, man. All these conventions are passing by, and I don't think I don't tune in, man. I'm like, man. It was you know, good. It's hard. But I hung yeah. out. Yeah. I did one tattoo, bro. I, I did yeah. one tattoo. It's different. And I just went and hung out with I just went and hung out with all my friends. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. fuck it. You know, I'll take the I'll take the little hit on the um, but I got to see like a bunch like my man Drew Boris, uh the kid Boris who's out in Miami. That's right. Um, you know, Boris, he does he does all like the black work type of stuff and shit yep. with letters and shit. He's crazy, he's with uh, FK and him. Yep. I got to see him. Uh I got to see a bunch, man, just a bunch of people, my homegirl Jack, and um met some cool people. Like I said, I'm such a fan of the artwork now that when I'm uh, one, I'll say this: If I do conventions now, I think I'm gonna just get my whole booth by myself. I think working in the shop all the time has kind of spoiled me. Yeah. With where before, you know, you were like elbow to elbow. Oh, like, yeah, fitting. Uh, was it two two eight two by per, tens? Right. Yeah, you yeah. Two eight by ten, and you got about that's meant for four artists, but we're tripling it sometimes. Yeah. I remember, bro. Get rid of all the tables. Get those TV dinner trays yeah. and fit yeah. like twelve heads back there, bro. Fast, yeah. And, and <laughs> people I think don't I'm, know that life, man. People don't yeah. know. There's a. a I lot think of, I'm spoiled, man. Bro. I think I'm spoiled to go back to that. So like, I started doing this tattoo and I and then uh, You're like, somebody was like, "Yo, let me get." They were like, "Let me get past you," and I was like, "I in my mind, I was like, nope, this is the last one I'm doing this show." And I just, <laughs> I went and started just hanging out and yeah. uh. Just you know, having some drinks and kicking it, and you know, having a good time that way. But yeah, if I do it now, I think I want to kind of have some things organized too. You know, I like being organized now. I realize that as is if I if I was if as I've aged in my tattoo career, I like having a lot of things planned and well thought out. I always see my tattoos come out a lot better when I've meticulously planned them. You know, that's funny because um, back then we were like. Eating it up like we're just go 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 next. Oh right. yeah yeah hey man yeah. would you like black blah 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 hey. it, and that listen I still that's fun to some degree like if you're doing something small but I can't I couldn't imagine trying to do a, like a quarter sleeve big piece off just yeah a walk up now for me I mean everybody different you know I just like I said I like planning that planning back then we were shoot from the hip my boy roll that shoot dice. From the hip. 
Man, listen, Alex used to throw me up on I swear to God, Alex would tell he told he, to, he was like, Yeah, he's a war winning artist. I'm sitting like, motherfucker, I ain't number one. He's like, shh. I remember you told me the story. I remember I was you like, Yo. kidding. Oh, he's in all the magazines, bro. You said I was yeah, like, yo, this know? motherfucker's crazy, bro. He like invented it, black <laughs> the ink of he invented color tattoos. <laughs> yeah, facts. Yeah. <laughs> he crazy, had, he was bro. the best hype man, bro. And I used to like, I remember watching like Hato Man. He was like, he would draw him with the markers and he would like smear it, like yeah. shading and shit. Like, bro, like, like you said, some people just built for that. Maybe yeah. I, I would, maybe I would have to do more to get myself back into that mode. But I just be like, it's seeing everybody. I think I get so yeah. excited seeing the, seeing people come out and I, and you know, I like walking around and hanging out in people booths and shit that I forget to like, oh, I got to go make some money. <laughs> yeah and you know another thing is, is schedules at home is why i've kind of sat out on a lot of conventions that i know i would have loved to have done but it doesn't align up with my kids schedule or some case or the other like you said oh, man bro. i think priorities yeah. have just you know yeah because it's you and your lady it's you and your lady yep. is and you each other's partners so right. like even something simple as okay Let's say she's off on the weekend, but she might not have that Friday off. I got to miss. I know I'm a, if I try to do it, I'm at least miss Friday because I got to be here to, you know, my parents are young, man. My parents still work and shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they had me young and shit. My parents were like 19 and shit. So it's like they're still working and shit. So it's not it ain't like just drop him off at grandma's house. Right. She might be out doing her own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like me, at least for me and white, we each other's support system so well that uh, doesn't even include travel times you know on and off and yeah you know yeah yeah there's a lot yeah. to it man well and time lost too like again we're trying to be there your kid has a soccer game or your kid has a you know an uh an award or something but that's the same weekend of the convention you're like oh man yeah no that's the god's on the street it always happens like that it does happen like every that. time they plan it yeah <laughs> every time bro every time that's, that's literally exactly how what it happens is, man that's crazy and and you know what's cool is that you have that support system like i do too also but it's nice to say i guarantee you you motivated her to do the whole what did she do before this the new the truck the food truck and all that yeah she was uh a and she was in corporate banking. She did okay. like fraud or some shit. And, you know what I mean? She was in a cubicle. And then and then you're over here like, come on, let's get you going, entrepreneur. Let's get your own spot. Let's make you this. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. team. Yeah, she didn't. I think when she first jumped in, I don't know if she realized it. Even though she was like, watch me do it and build it, I don't think she knew it. Because like, so, even now, someday she'll be like, God damn, I've been rolling all day. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, motherfucker, that's that's in it. You asked for yeah. it. You in it now, homie. Like, that's, we welcome in to that life. Oh, yeah. That's and, real. And, and food's a whole nother monster, bro. I couldn't do it. I don't like being greasy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's not my... I might throw a steak on there, but that's like the, right, you right, know, right, the right. end of my culinary abilities. You know, <laughs> I'm not no chef like her. She be she be putting that work in, man. She might have to start like even when she doing like some fall off the bone. She sure. might got to start that shit five hours before, you oh, know, yeah. like that's that just crazy. Yeah, I get the benefit because I get to eat, but right. you know, yeah. But I do, you know, I got to move the truck. I changed the oil on the generators. I, I'm always doing like the other day. She had to, I had to go get her a new tire. One of the tires went flat and. You know, I jump in and play. You know, I get in where I fit in. Yo, you got Absolutely. a whole wall of awards. I see. I need some. I need some, bro. I got one award. I, I no, won a bunch man. Of awards. I, I'm pretty sure you competed more than that, didn't you? I got one, bro. I won one time. Uh, well, tell me about that that award. Where was it? Um, small black and gray. I think I won second place. Uh, Baltimore is somewhere around here. Uh, what's this? Maybe 21, maybe, maybe 21. You know, that was a big deal for me, man. Cause that was like, you know, like I said, for me, tattooing the way I came in, because I didn't, I guess, necessarily come in the way a lot of tattoo tattooers come in. I'm always seeking uh the validation of my peers. So to win, uh to win, you know, even second place, that 
out of all those guys to compete meant a lot to me, yeah. you know. Um, I put some stuff in this year to Baltimore, but really, like, outside, like I said, taking care of my family, I think now that is one of my main objectives is to, to put together some award-winning sleeves, award-winning, right. you know, I would like to get some tattoo clients in that want to, you know, have some unique ideas where I can try to really show out some talents. Um, I was saying it's funny because now a lot of, to me, from what comes in the shop, I, I think I underestimated how much a lot of people now, at least in my area, they just want a lot of like small tattoos. And I'm like, oh shit, this is crazy. Like, yeah. Quick pause on our chat to give a big thanks and shout out to today's sponsor, No Numbing Cream Tattoo Club. There's a lot of controversy that surrounds the usage of numbing cream during a tattoo session, and I totally understand. Every artist has their concerns. With No Numbing Cream Tattoo Club, they've crafted a unique formula that is effective, doesn't alter the skin's texture, and is completely safe. I've used it already on multiple clients, especially when we're doing those marathon sessions, and it really helps them sit comfortably. You could use it not just on tattooing, but there's body piercings, laser tattoo removal, laser hair removal, waxing, and permanent cosmetics. They provide an easy step-by-step -step instruction on how to apply. So if you're planning your next piece and know you'll be in the chair for a while, consider using No Numbing Cream Tattoo Club to make the experience easier for both you and your artist. Thanks again to No Numbing Cream Tattoo Club for sponsoring the podcast. Those of you listening or watching the video version of the podcast, I appreciate all the support that we've been getting from clients to listeners. You guys have been awesome. If this is your first time tuning in, don't forget to subscribe or follow the channel on any of the platforms where you catch your podcast so you don't miss out on any new episodes. All right, now let's get on with the show. Thank you again. So, my, so I, I kind of want to play devil's advocate. I'm sure you tune into what a lot of OG artists will say. Remember the movement? You you started on a coil machine? Yeah, early on. I didn't okay. stay on it, but yeah, once okay, I got Okay, no, on likewise. Too. I started I built I started building coil machines. Okay? And then I I started with coil machines. People around me were using the first rotaries and I was that guy. Low low to the, you know what I mean? Low to the coil. Yeah. So the way that transitioned where the lot of OGs still had that attack versus that you see a lot of OGs attack versus awards at shows. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You know what I'm trying to get at? Because, and again, it's not at all trying to like rain our own parade, but at the time, like you mentioned, people don't understand that. Okay. Let's say I hear it all. I hear from every single different walk of life of artists that's saying, well, let's see what kind of convention that is. Who are the judges? What did you win? What did you oh, enter? Oh, yeah, for sure. Who else did it? You know what I mean? They, they're they really trying to like, what would you call that though? Is that gatekeeping? Is that like? I think any, any uh, industry has that. And I yeah. think, yeah, I think. A I barber think some competition, of that might, per se. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think some of that might play into it. It's all in good fun for me. I don't give it that much weight, you know. No, in the yeah, for sure. In the context of uh, like. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all in the good fun of competitive. You know, I'm not out here. I never, I guess, like I said, I guess because of how I came into the industry, I never was a clicky person. So I never right. really got into none of the industry politics. The about, politics, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I don't really yeah. get into the politics, you know, because I don't really give a fuck about none of that shit. You know, right. I'm just happy to be here, truthfully. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And happy to know a, you know everybody from all walks you know some some guys i i agree i have seen it i've heard it i've even yeah. just, like seen it with my own eyes so have I. And, and, um, and you know because i was asking that because that one award you got like you said the peers we would be like yo that i'll congrat everybody congratulate you that's dope we're there we're present we see it right the awards i've gotten at different conventions right now i'll tell you what it's kind of like those tattoos where, yeah, I'll tell you which one I got, what award, where, man, I've heard it all with where the OG guys are saying, well, why didn't you get first? Or why? I'm like, bro, you're starting to sound like a hater. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? And yeah, I'm like, dude, yeah. let's just let's just think about the fact that I didn't know. Look, however you want to, there's a judging system, right? A lot of people want to argue that. They say, like what you see on TV. I think a lot of that started, man. Like, there's all that, that raging about, well, what won this? 
this award? What what was the criteria? What was the category? What was the the points? Who's 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 giving out the points? Are they like on what magazine? What do they, you know, again, let's just focus on the fact that homie got something and, and for as accomplishment, a recognition, whatever the case, you know, yeah. and I'm like, I could have got like, like, that's why. And to me, bro, the most humbling thing, like an OG was the one that told me to go, go compete, you know, like somebody of, yeah. of a, a certain stature was like, well, go and do it. This is my homie, Mike. This is what I was talking about earlier. How's it going, man? Welcome What's to the good, podcast. Bro? Nice. I was telling him, I was like, you know, you, uh, he was asking about people are apprentice. I was like, you always call it an apprentice. I said, I don't really say, I just helped you. And I was just telling him how you really elevated. And I was telling him about like us doing stoop life. And, uh, it really is just a homage to like, Which I'm a fan. I watch it. You know what I mean? How we come, sure. come up in the neighborhood and that's what we did. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so Owen, that, this so is my I, man. Owen. Yeah. What's up, bro? brother? Oh, so like, like we used to travel and shit. This who gave me my CS. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. But like back to the awards. Oh, that apprentice under me, she's been tattooing now for five, six years. I tell her, hey, go, go compete. Um, doesn't matter what other people are saying in the net and the webs are like, you know, those competitions. They people will say, okay, well, there should only be first place. I get that. I get that argument. And I get the argument about who's really? giving out the award, you know. Oh, I've heard it, bro. I've heard from the kind of people that there should like, only be a first place. That's that's not no fun, man. But you know what I mean, though. That's an argument. So again, which I I agree, man. Like I'm trying to see both sides of it. So out of a motivational thing, I'm telling her, forget all that. Enter it. Go enter your piece. You know what I'm saying? Enter your your award. She though she's already got three awards. You know? Yeah. And, I mean, you're but, really competing against yourself, honestly. I mean, you it's all in good fun, man. It's just it's all like, good fun. It's all in good when fun. You, the people that were there, that like the peers that seen you win that, you get your recognition, you, you get the love, you get the that's how a lot of us were were found yeah. each other. I'll go up to you. That's just all check in out good what you fun, want. Man. I remember you going up to almost every winner and be like, Can I see that tattoo? I just want to see it. You know? Uh, hell yeah. You know, I remember yeah, that. that. I remember we'd be by the stage and be like, yo, look at that. And you would come up to me, go check out that first place uh, yeah. tattoo of the day. I don't know, man. I hate when the politics get involved in the actual just enjoyment of the the, the ta win and lose, bro. Fuck it. Like, right. I guess with me, like I said, when you, I say you're competing against yourself, like, if I don't win, I'm not saying like, oh, nobody hated on me. I'm looking at my tattoo, comparing, and I'm like, damn. I'm gonna come a little harder next time, but I'm saying it in a fun way. Like, yeah, yeah now, I, man, listen, next time I'm gonna I'm gonna go crazy on this piece. I'm gonna do something. You know, it's it's. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I guess sometimes sometimes we need that tangible bar that we raised on ourselves, kind of thing, like that standard. I'm trying to do the next best, the next best. So anytime we get into that kind of conversation at the shop, where people will come in, like you say, and this is one of the first things they see is a wall, right? But I'm like, look, I appreciate that, but. I'm still trying to drive to get that next higher, you know? Yeah. And, and that's yeah. what, cause if I don't, if you don't have anybody around you to like, for instance, you guys got, you have a whole crew, like you mentioned, like the artists that work for you or whatever, or the guys you're motivating, the guys that you want to see strive, right? If you don't have that around you, you're going to have to like, you also can't get comfortable. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't plateau. And you know exactly what that is. Like oh, they man, say, listen. I already know we got this girl in there and named Rhea. And uh, and Rhea, Rhea was actually on like Ink Master Angels and shit. And she okay. she uh she used to she usually does like a lot of like neo shit, but like more she started oil painting. And then recently she started busting out these fucking crazy color realism portraits and shit. Like and and this is within the last like I would say yeah. two years, bro. Wow. And she really took herself back to school, uh, buying the online seminars and like, like I said, doing the old painting meticulously. And, uh, bro, she's going crazy. Mm -hmm. I had to step back and look at myself like, damn, what am I doing to become better? All right, let me go ahead and, uh, go download this seminar. Let me look for the next one. Like you said, I would like right. to do a lot more seminars, but it's harder to get out now with the family and the business, right, you know, right. all that type of stuff. So I'll try to find some of the online ones. Uh, 
now. But uh, yeah, man, that's it's all about being a better you. That's the yeah. part people forget about. And I think like I said in all industries, and um, I want the young kids who coming in to know. If you if you learn from the people who've been here before, you'll move faster in your career. You yeah. know, and uh, if you always stay hungry, you know, and I ain't gonna say huh, say humble. I'm not a big humble person. I I'm gonna say stay respectful, right, and stay hungry, and sky to be the limit. You know. Yeah. Sky would be the limit because a lot of times it's a respect factor. And it's like, even if you don't agree with somebody telling you, you know, just listen, you yeah. never know wisdom. You know, we have, because we've been in it a while now and we've lived some life. Uh, we have the wisdom to know that some of the information that we got, we didn't need it until we needed it. Mm, right. You know, you might've been like, Man, that ain't gonna help me. And then, ten years later, oh shit! Yeah, I need that now. They did tell me that. Absolutely. That that's where wisdom comes in. So, for the young guys, that's that's the biggest thing I would tell them is like, stay hungry and be respectful. You know, and and and, and you'll go mad far. Right. So right now, your your goal with the shop, you said you're gonna you want to eventually get back into the to like the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come May, I'm going to, uh, um, we're going to start probably renovating, uh, this spot for my wife. I'm going to go back and down to the shop. I'm going to do some light renovation, some paint. We're going to move some stuff around. Um, and I'm going back in there with the mindset of I'm hungry. I didn't caught my second win. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't Absolutely. caught what, third, fourth win. I like, I, I, I'm I'm in it to try to level myself up, man. Really, just for the sake of doing it. I make money, man. It ain't you know. It ain't just the money. Like, yeah, of course, everybody likes more money. You know, I want more money. I'm not gonna sit right. and act like we don't. But it's for the sake of knowing I I leveled up in 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 um, and I'm trying to get everybody else to get on that same mindset. I look at the kids out in uh LA like uh what's the to do Fernie with uh was it Manifest? Oh yeah Fernie and, Andrade uh, yep yeah 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 like in his crew they going crazy Robert you Ford. know what I'm saying they you know I'm they saying? going crazy uh like, what's Inc what's my man named Robert Foe yeah Ink uh, Industries yeah yeah him and his crew they going crazy you know like they they out here acting like they starving yeah uh man. the way they they going crazy on stuff and uh, a lot of other people, a lot of other people I'm watching and stuff. Like, I want to get my crew on that time, like, like on that mental, like, look, we here, to, we here to take down and crush. I want to, I want to be able to look across, and I already do, but I'm saying, to, even to a next level, look over. I want Mike coming like, and I'm like, Ooh, boy, that's yeah. crazy. You know, I just want to have as much fun and enjoy and push it to the limits. Why I still had a physical ability to do so, you know, right. like I said, I just turned 40, man. I'm if I'm blessed, let's say I got another 25, 30 years in this while I still got the the physical and mental sharpness to do so. I just want to I just want to be the best tattooer I can be. You know, the money I'll, you know, I'll manage my money. I'll buy more properties. I'll do all the set myself up for retirement, but for the, the shop, you know, we're going to do some fun shit. You know, I don't know if you, you know, I tried to drop a show called Tats and Snacks. I might try to revisit that. Yeah. Um, I had actually signed a, a, a um, pitch deal contract with a production company for a minute, trying to get back to the core of tattooing. I would like to do more conventions. If we do, I would like to try to get, figure out how to, and do more guest spots and right. figure out how to book out before I get there and uh, come out and hang out with you and, yeah, man. you know, uh, Gutter and um, my man, Chris Malos. That's really it, bro. I keep it simple, man. I try not to overthink it, you right. know, now, nowadays. Uh, Cause like people always like, Oh, what do you want? I'm doing what I love. 
Like, I absolutely love this shit. You know what I mean? I'm doing, I don't wait for nobody to start a, like, I don't wait till I'm rich to start a club. I start one now. You know, yeah, all this, do, do want, you want to do a podcast, you want to do a TV show, let's do it now. Like, right. so this, I just want to continue to do the things that I'm already doing just at a higher level. Keep pushing it and taking it further, man. And hopefully get to, like I said, see you, see your family, you know, meet the kids, meet the ground, you know what I'm saying? Like, bring my son out just yeah. enjoy life man and really push you know what we have as as far as i can take it until uh i'm ready to pass it on to the you know pass the torch to the next person and tell them run as far as they can go absolutely well, well mike what do you got what do you got planned bro honestly it's a a lot of the same following the tutelage of how long how long have you been so far like how long has it been so far um i've been at the shop since uh 2020 so okay. uh right around the time <laughs> oh yeah man we was dogging it out there i started scratching in the house you know a little hotel parties and shit like that back in like right. 2012 oh man but i had a little hiatus um but bet between those times uh but it was really honestly when i when i hooked up with other artists and uh linked up with dom where i really i saw myself get to the point where though i really wanted to be um Cause I, I knew I could draw, I knew I could paint and stuff like that. But was bro, this nigga got a master's in art, bro. That's already a lot that a lot of people don't have getting into this to have a background and understanding of art, compositions, of things that we kind of had to learn as we went. You know, you already had a lot of stuff, boots on the ground, running. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yes and no. See, I mean, just like many artists, I'm a try to be a perfectionist, man. And, and when I'm especially on skin, bro, that, those first couple of years, when I saw myself not getting to the point where like, I saw in my head, yeah. it was real discouraging, you know what I mean? But when I when I linked up with Dom and uh, and the, the other artists at the shop, I was able to like really learn and soak in all of that information and then apply it. Um, now I'm really starting to just, just really apply those those different skills and techniques and try to take it to the next level as far as doing larger pieces. That's really what I, I really want to start doing some collab pieces. We got like, we got, you know, myself, Dom, and another artist in the shop, Kyle. We, oh, yeah, we Kyle, real, damn. Yo, this kid is a savage. This motherfucker, savage. yo, he came to the shop from Peru. He's like, he was, oh, he's, he's a, 21. Oh, he's a kid you're telling me about, yeah. Yeah, he's from, well, no, I got from one from Venezuela and one Venezuela, from Peru. And he's from Peru, and, this guy, huh? This kid's yeah. from Peru. Yo, he was here a week. He didn't speak no fucking English. Bro, this Man. kid is a fucking savage. Savage. That's crazy. So we all kind of, you know, we all got that black and gray um, base. So I really want to, you know, start doing some large, uh, you know, black and gray stuff where we can, we can, you know, tag team. Oh, yeah. You know, or at least some 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 content stuff, because that's really what it's about right now is having, you know, two or three pieces we can have, you know, build that content off of, uh, grow that base, because that's really where I'm at now, because I really still see myself as a um, as an amateur tattoo artist, as a, a tattoo artist that hasn't really gotten to the point where I really want to be. So that's really the next step, cleaning up my work. We're doing larger pieces, yeah, just following the footsteps of the greats, bro. That's, That's dope, really man. Well, I'll tell you what, wow. man, you have a great mentor, a great environment. Where you are in the East Coast, man, there's there's definitely I want to call it there's this bridge that where we, you where we connect, and that's when I started seeing Dom's work elevating, man, raising that bar, yeah, like, for sure, like literally. And then he, he's able to rub that influence onto the guys around him. It's pretty amazing to see that. Like, wow. I knew him at. You know, again, he said that was like one of my first conventions that I met him. And it was just like where we are now, man. It's just pretty. Bro, I was, I was sucking, bro. I pretty know insane. it's, yo, anybody who I did on the convention, I, I, if y'all hate me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's some people out there that probably hate my guts. From, from the first conventions to, you know, like stuff like this, he put oh, down, yeah, that. you know, clean stuff like this now. So, man, That's yeah, this def and honestly, yo, us, being around each other and and knowing that it's we can't be stagnant we can't be sitting here sitting on our hands and stuff like that pushed each other yo we started right. just like you know feed off of each other energy like look bro you doing this one day i'm doing the same thing the next day 
we, yeah. you know, just trying to, to level elevating. up. Off of yeah, stuff. keep raising the bar, you know. For sure. Bro, Definitely. you still got the dojo in the garage? Oh, yeah, man. We, we... We're still training there, man. Teaching the kiddos and stuff now too, and and just trying oh, to, you know, as far uh, with competing and all that, man, is is hard. One injury puts us out, man. We can't work, you know. That's what I'm scared of. That's the one thing I'm because I, yo, when we were up there, it, it like I said, crazy, bro. Some of them dudes be getting fucked up. Oh yeah, like, dude, I've seen I've seen some injuries, bro. I've been through injuries too, where I'm like sweating it. I have to take the week off. I pop a rib or. You know, busting my good hand like a finger or something, and then you know mm. soreness. We got to be, you know, it sucks though, because like that—that's the the way you go into the gym. You know, that's your your therapy. I'm over here choking dudes right. out and then start my day. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just a fun thing. Now I just do it for the physicality too, man. You physically exhaust your body, push yourself to the edge. It's funny because we 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 find as artists too, we have to find the next thing and we just try to push ourselves. We're always trying to challenge ourselves, whether it's challenges ourselves with a new style, with a new technique. Um, we, we have, everybody has that room of slack and to, to, you, to keep growing, you know? And, and that's why I'm like, I'm not, I definitely want to do more conventions, man. I'm not like done with them. I'm just, I just figure it out. You know, that's my biggest thing. What, what about you though? As far as your career, I mean, you, you, you travel, you won awards, you know, you, you look, you publish books. Shit, I got one of these motherfuckers. In, yeah, in, I'm working in my, on another in my one. book cabinet. Yeah, I'm uh, working on another one for sure. What is next for you in tattooing? With tattooing, man, I'm studying, like, like homie said, sharpen that blade, man. Just sharpen the blade. Hey, I want to get into some things where trying out how to how to project the picture of what you do like for, as a tattoo project the picture in the right way what i want to do next in tattooing is besides the fact that i want to expand you know i want to expand i want to expand the shop i want to do little things like the business side as far as the personal side the different styles that that you know i want to go back to to painting on a on a paper you know i haven't done that in a minute bro you tell me to paint something for you right now i'm gonna struggle for a little bit <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. but you know i i I'm I'm continuing to push obviously what's given to us. So I don't really do the walk. I don't do walk in traffic anymore. Everything's all by appointment. But every tattoo oh, that shit. I do. Yeah. So I I've been since 2021 or 2020, bro, I've been appointment only. And mm -hmm. so that's like once in a while somebody will come hit, you know, hit the door because I, I have a storefront. So I I open, I let it in. It's just part of the customer service part of it. And the walk-in mentality, the way we were, again, back from conventions, I'll let them yeah. in, we'll talk, and I just let them know that, look, you know, this is an appointment only, obviously. I have everything stated outside. It's just that I'm just not that guy that I'm going to, you know, not open the door to somebody. Obviously, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, but I let them in, we talk about it, and they become a client. They become an appointment. They become a regular, you know? And so I guess... What I like to do, though, is whatever is given to me as far as the style, it's our job to give them that that yeah. tattoo that they, you know. And so you kind of the way the same way you mentioned it, it's just being the better, the best of my abilities that I can and to push it. Yeah. And to keep trying out the new things in a, a safe slack where, you know, you're not doing something out of the out of the crazy, you know, out of the blue. But. It's just to sharpen, refine everything. Yeah. Knowing what I know. That's funny. You knowing what I know now, just to push it forward, you know, push that and, and continue to there's always something, man. After and I know you feel this, man, both of you guys. After you finish the tattoo, we're our worst own. Oh own my critic. god. Man, what we you mean? That. I'm like a uh calling dawn like what's the uh yeah. what's this shit where the samurai cuts and the you, shit open? What's yes. The, what's the uh the shit with the samurai it's like you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's how that's how I feel most times. It's funny because it's like that's um, good to feel that. It's good to feel that because that shows where you are with what you do. That's passion. That's we're haunted by those pieces that are like where you said it earlier. You said it like a lot of stuff I, I get emotional about because it's like, am I even worth it? Am I even built for this still? Or am I am I losing this? Am I what's going on? Yeah. And, there's a lot that we have to go through, man, that's behind the scenes. Like I yeah. tell people in our, you know, we can't, 
And like Franco Viscovi, I, I would sometimes listen, watch his videos when back in the day, bro, like a lot of the black and gray tutorial stuff. But I would like... Bro, it was nice to meet you, Hey, later on, man. What's up, little man? What's up? So give everybody your name. What's your name or everything? How old are you? Leo, but my real name is Leonidas. Leonidas. Like I like that. So awesome. like, you know, Franco Viscovi was talking about that, how to turn that switch on and off when we go through those struggles. Mm -hmm. And that's the realest thing ever, man. And to not allow that stuff to like... You know, just sharpen it. That's that's what's next for tattooing on my end, bro. I'm just trying everything I do already. Just perfect it. You know, uh, get that sharp pinpoint. Yeah. Push it, elevate it in your own way to your own ability. Little little is the little adjustments that you do, bro. It's like jujitsu. Minute movement goes a long way. You know mm. what I'm saying? The little bit of space yes. to defend yourself. So in in essence, if we do this with tattooing, the little bit of extra little something that you add in there i'll tell people this separates it from just a tattoo to something that's worthy of competition of of display i treat everybody like i'm gonna wear it all the mm. tattoos i do like i'm gonna wear those tattoos yeah so with that mindset is the same as goes with how you feel a certain way with like you know the the heaviness of like, man, now I'm losing sleep over a piece I just did two hours ago because I'm like, did I really do the best of my abilities? Yeah, and then, yeah. And, but you know, that again makes you hungry to push. Oh, yeah, I'm ready to always get back in the ring, man. I think yeah. uh, when I go back down with them in, in May, I already told them, because I'm like you, I was just appointment only because I, I would let them eat. I would let them get the right. walk-ins. I would let that feed them, but you know, I noticed some of them, they don't show up for work. You know, they're, we open up at noon. They don't want, you know, they, they're strolling in two o'clock. I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 check yeah. it out. I'm ready to jump back in the rotation. I'm going to jump. I'm going to show you how I really get down, you know, and hopefully that'll reflect on you because I'm now I'm a lead by example, you know, because uh, I remember feel, not knowing when the next tattoo was going to come. You know what I mean? And, uh, like you said, treating every tattoo like it was going to be a war winning piece, even though, even if it was a infinity, you know, right. I want to see how clean can I do? The, oh, let me add a little filigree to this, 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 uh, this, uh, infinity symbol, you know, yeah. to make, make it, it a, a one of a kind piece, exactly. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and customers appreciate that, man. A lot of customers do because the way our mind works, uh, I don't think they, I don't, I think they see stuff online, but I don't know if they even understand the possibility of right. what a good tattoo could be. Yeah. That's, you know? that's, that's our job to steer them in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were, so I know like give it up with some time and stuff. I know it's a little later over there, which again, dude, I appreciate you so much that we were able to do that. No, I, man, I'm chilling. He's good. He, we yeah, yeah. Right. To kind of like wrap things up, just like one last thing I want to ask through all that you've been through, like your life to this point, this moment where you stand on this ground, you know, what would you tell somebody if they asked you that advice? Going through it all, if you were to summarize it, what would you tell somebody? Persistence overrides resistance, hmm. you know? In a world of instant gratification, know that that's not how it really works in the real world. And when you plant a seed, you have to wait on, you have to nurture it and you have to wait on the season to grow. And that's, that's how life is. So I would tell them, stay vigilant, stay uh, determined and stay patient. Know when to strike, you know, that that's a good thing to, but just, you know, be patient, stay disciplined. Discipline is probably, it, they say discipline is the currency of your dreams. Right. So the more disciplined you can stay on the task at hand, the better the outcome is going to be. So like when, you know, via be tattooing, via be whatever it is you're trying to do, you know, nothing I did, I didn't do without discipline or persistence. You know, when I met, it's a lot of things. And I can use that tattooing as an example. Like I, you know, I came in with little to no guidance, the persistence to stay close to it, to keep, you know, put me in the places, you know, that manifesting, it put me in the right places with the right people who were 
able to help me get to the other side of my journey, you know, and continue to to this day. It's hard to really convey it without experience, you know, experience breeds understanding. Absolutely. So, you know, when when you in it, you know, I always tell people it's kind of like swimming in the ocean you or just swimming period. You ever be swimming and you like you're paddling and you're going and then you you you'll stop and look up like damn I thought I went way further and then yep. you'll get to swimming and swimming and swimming and then you know your hand hits the other side of the pool and you're like oh shit I didn't even realize I was already there right. so it's kind of like that if you just stay in it stay stay to it and you'll get wherever you want to go that's that's like my the best advice that I can give anybody you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? The miracles and the are in the experiences and the people that you meet along the way. And, and if you respect those things and stay persistent, you'll, you know, be able to accomplish a 90, 99% of the stuff you want to do, man. That's key, man. Where can people find you? Find me at uh Prezzo underscore Carter uh, on IG, Prezzo Carter on, you know, most other platforms, Rip Canvas, R-I-P-P-D, Canvas, no, no, no E. Uh, that's the shop. That's where I'm at. Canvas Cartel is the brand. Hit us up, man. Hit us up on IG. Hit, hit me up on, you know, all the major TikTok, all the, if they don't take it down, <laughs> you know, right. they talk like, <laughs> email me, get, just get in contact with me. You know, if right. you want to collab or you want to do, you know, get one a piece or you just mm-hmm. want to, some advice, shit, I'm an open yeah. book, man. Yeah. Hit me up. I appreciate me that, up. man. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate much, you, bro. old man. So I miss you, you, man. Really, I, in my heart of hearts, I swear, I really want to get out there and hang out with you, man. Yeah, we got to make that happen, man. You stay at my spot and everything, bro. Like, you know, I got an op- open door to you, so just come out. Appreciate bring the you. family. Bring the family. We'll all go do some family stuff together, man. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Mad love to you, the fam. Say what's up to the wifey and everybody. I uh, hope you guys are- you Well, we're about to go over there now and probably get something to eat. For sure, yeah, man. Well, I appreciate everybody also tuning in. This is Tattooing Out Loud with the very first broadcast brought to you live from the Baltimore, the man himself. Thank you, bro, man. I appreciate you, you, man. Absolutely. Everything's good, man. Everything's so, like, my whole focus is now just, you know, making sure we're good, you know what I mean, up here. Yeah, yeah. Keeping it together when you know what it takes. Yeah, people don't realize that, man. It's a lot when you are uh, the captain of the ship, right. you know? Oh, like I said Even earlier, you know, yeah. you got to do what's best for the kingdom, not what's best for the king, you know? And sometimes sacrificing some of your wants, like convention, to yeah, make man. sure that everybody's good. A lot of people don't see that, especially in today's climate. I think they just become expecting of it. We got wings. We like to fly, too. But, you know, we sit here and we watch over everybody and watch over everything and make sure everybody good. And that's I think for people like us, that's how we show our love. You know, that's where I think you and I relate a lot. We got that same stability and mindset as far as know how to, in essence, bro, keep it together, you know? Hell yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't, man. I, I'm actually in shock because like, even like my buddy, Tony Scientific, he's been tattooing a long time and I really respect him. He's over in Germany now. I'm always shocked like he doesn't have his own studio or something like that. And I, I realized through dealing with people, even for his convention, I realized I could do some things myself. And, and I'm saying all to say is like, when you say keeping it together, I underestimated how many people don't know how to do that. Yeah, it's a real thing, man. That's a real problem right now. I'll talk to some of my buddies and I'm like, wait, oh, how's the kids? He's like, well, I ain't seen them in months. I'm like, what? Wow. Like, that's, I'm okay. like, bro, that's crazy. You know, we're living, in, we're, we're living in this crazy world right now, bro, that it's not surprising, you know, especially after the way things have been going. It's scary. It's a grim, dark future for our kids, man. It is and it isn't because, again, that goes back to kind of the things we were talking about, adaptability from their fathers, how we adapted and yeah. how we were raised. I tell my kids, like, the way I was brought up, I don't wish that upon a lot of people. Same thing yeah. with you, I'm sure. Look what we made out of it. I didn't stick it to the plan like they wanted. Came out, yeah. it came out good, and it, and it came from work ethic. It came yeah. from work ethic, discipline. That's that literally next, next and kin. That's that next to get crowned. You know, I get that heavy. I understand that heavy now, especially when you said like, you know, I got two daughters now, man. Being a, a girl dad is a whole different thing, my boy. I, yo, I'm sure, bro. I'm not gonna say I wouldn't mind having a little girl, but it's beautiful, bro. It's beautiful. It 
I know you're gonna be you probably fucking mush now, bro. You oh, probably man. mush. But that little girl just stares at you a certain way or tasks you this, asks you that, bro. I'm a sucker, bro. I'm a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my boys were born and i was like let's go break some things bro let's go break some bones my daughters yeah. were born were born and i'm like i want to put them in a bubble you know yeah. I, don't wanna, I don't want them to get hurt i'm you know trying to carry them <laughs> same thing i want my my ladies to be independent i want them to be not and this is in my own views on what i think obviously i, I want them to be them let's let's give them a That's little that. bit of that insight of what whatever we can kick down imagine yeah. men, we're mentors too Hell and that's yeah. something that it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because it's like we're learning. I love that you have your lady motivate her to do what she's gonna do. You know, that's yeah, awesome. she's out there. She's out there killing it. It's great to see you thrive and to continue to thrive, man. You gotta man, keep. Thank you, bro. You know? I mean, this meant a lot to me, man. I've been I've been looking forward to this all week, man. I swear. I'll tell you I, what, I, like I I've been anxious to do this, and and believe me, like I there's a there's a lot of not there's a lot of doors I gotta go knock on right now. I'll tell you that much. Like I just have to do it one by one and I'll get overwhelmed because I need to go I want to hit up all the homies, bro. You know, like cause yeah, I, you know, and it, it's already it's doing pretty good, man. I'm getting a lot of good response and feedback on the 